Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is actually my second time filming this video. Apparently I somehow managed to delete an entire video's worth of footage. I was way too rushed, I've had a very busy month, a very hectic month, and I just must have erased a memory card thinking that I already downloaded the footage to my laptop, but I did not. It's okay because since filming the original version of this video, I did purchase a microphone for my camera. I hope there is a noticeable audio quality difference. If there isn't, I promise there will be. I just need to figure out how to use this thing properly. So it's sitting on top of my camera. I hope it's picking up my voice better and not like the sounds from outside as much. Let's get into the point of this video and that is my favorite fragrances. So I am a huge fragrance junkie. I love perfumes and picking out a top five was hard enough. I picked the top six. So I'm not gonna be picking, you know, this is my number one and number two, and no, I can't do that. My first favorite is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. This is so delicious. I remember when I got my first job in college, I used my first paycheck to buy this perfume because I had been dreaming of owning it for so long, and I was like, I'm gonna buy it for myself. This is gonna be my gift for, you know, adulting. You're gonna notice that my favorites are all very warm, mature, sexy scents, so that's gonna be my descriptive words for almost all of them, but this one is definitely very warm. If you're a person who changes their perfumes by season, this one is definitely more of like a fall winter and it's more of a nighttime. Whenever I feel like I need to be like wearing a hug, this is the perfume that I wear. I feel the most comfortable and the most myself when I'm wearing this. If I had to pick like a number one favorite, I would definitely say this is the number one. So I know I said that I wasn't going to go like this is number one, number two, but this one is probably number one for me. I have Fragrantica open on my phone so I can tell you guys what the notes are of all of these perfumes. So in Hypnotic Poison, the top notes are apricot, plum, and coconut. The middle notes are tuberose, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, Brazilian rosewood, and caraway. And the base notes are sandalwood, almond, vanilla, and musk. When I first spray this, I definitely smell a little bit of that plum, but as it wears, it goes super vanilla, super almond, super musk on me. All perfume kind of goes very sweet and gourmand on me. One of the most accurate like comparisons I've heard people compare this scent to is root beer. It definitely smells like a root beer float sometimes. Hypnotic Poison is an eau de toilette. Why does that sound wrong? It's not an eau de parfum, it's the other one. And it's super strong anyway. Eau de parfums are usually much stronger and more concentrated, so I can't imagine this being any more concentrated. The longevity of this perfume, it does last all day. It's not gonna last like overnight, but it will last you all day. And the sillage of this perfume, which again, my French sounds wrong today, but you know, like the throw of the perfume, and this is kind of like a five foot radius perfume. So my next favorite perfume, I have done an entire video dedicated to me opening and smelling it for the first time and I will link that video right over here and that is for Yves Saint Laurent's Black Opium. I don't remember exactly how I described it in my original review of the perfume but I'm sure that I mentioned it is a very strong, a very sexy, empowered scent. I bought this perfume because it was described as having notes of vanilla and coffee and I remember being like I want to smell like a fresh brewed roast. The top notes of this Eau de Parfum are pink pepper, orange blossom, and pear. The middle notes are coffee and jasmine, and the base notes are vanilla, patchouli, and cedar. So this perfume is kind of a mixture of like a floral and a gourmand with like vanilla and coffee and I don't normally like floral scents. This one kind of has like that spicy little like kick to your nose. As for how long this one lasts, this one definitely lasts a lot longer than Hypnotic Poison. This one will last you a whole work day and then some and people will smell you from like a pretty good radius. Like I've had my coworkers be like 20 feet away and be like, oh, someone smells really good. And I'm just like, oh, that would be me. That would be Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium. Thank you so much. My next favorite is another one of those like strong, empowering woman scent, and that is Dolce & Gabbana, the one. I absolutely adore this perfume. This is my like date night fragrance. Super like mysterious and sultry, glamorous. The gold color of the perfume and the packaging, I feel like it actually really embodies what this fragrance smells like to me. This fragrance is definitely one of my more fruity scents, but it still has like an oriental and vanilla tone to it, and I love oriental scents so much. And I'm sure that you've heard that perfumes smell different on everyone. Like I've mentioned, my body chemistry really pulls out like the vanilla, musky, warm scents in perfumes. And it's so strange because as I was growing up, my mother actually wore this perfume, and on her, it smelled kind of more fruity and powdery. The composition opens with softly fresh mandarin, bergamot, lychee, and peach, 
the heart is thin and balmy with the notes of jasmine, lily of the valley, and white lily, which graciously intertwine with the fruity touch of plum. The woodsy powdery base is created of vetiver root, amber, musk, and vanilla. The one lasts for quite a long time, not as long as black opium, but I believe more than hypnotic poison. The sillage of this perfume is kind of closer to the body, which is another reason why I think it's a good date night perfume, other than feeling like a bold, empowered woman. Your date kind of has to get close to really smell your perfume on you. My next favorite perfume is the first perfume that I did an unboxing and review of here on my channel and that is Victor and Rolf Bonbon. Bon. If you would like to see the full review, I will leave the link right up here. Bonbon bon is exactly what its name and packaging imply. It is a super sweet, delicious, gourmand, caramel bonbon bon type of smell, like those little caramel bonbons. Much like its older sister flower bomb, Bonbon, bon, the sillage is crazy. Everyone will know that you smell like Bonbon, bon. and also it lasts forever. I can put this on one morning and I will still smell like it the next morning after going to the gym and having a shower and everything, like I will still smell good. This was actually an anniversary present for my boyfriend that year. I think that was our three year anniversary. I don't remember how long ago that was. And I'm sure you guys know that some smells can really trigger memories for you. This is one of those smells that when I spray it, I'm just kind of like, I feel warm and fuzzy inside. The keynote is caramel, surrounded by aromas of mandarin, orange and peach at the top, flowers of orange blossom and jasmine in the heart, and cedar, guaiac wood, sandalwood, and amber in the base. I feel like on me I lose all of the citrus in this scent, like I definitely smell the caramel and then I feel like I skip all of the fruits and I go straight into like the sandalwood and amber in the base. My next favorite perfume has possibly the ugliest packaging out of all of my perfumes. I hate having it on display, but I love the smell so much that it's still a favorite and that is Prada Candy. I got it in one of these smaller sizes because I feel like the bigger this bottle gets, the uglier it looks. <laughs> and I know that's such a silly thing to think about, but like, why is this packaging so weird? And it looks like you can like press this to spray it, but no, it pops off and then you spray this and then it looks even more boring and simple, like, come on Prada. But it is one of my favorite scents for everyday wear. I wear this perfume pretty much almost every single day to work because it's simple, it's not overpowering, but you still smell really good and well put together. And when I say simple, I really mean simple. It is almost at the level of like a celebrity fragrance with how little is actually in the perfume. It doesn't last anywhere near as long as Flower Bomb does. Like it's not going to smell so strong that your grandkids are gonna know you wore it 20 years ago. Like no, it's not that strong, but it'll last you a good work day. So that's fine by me. Like Bon Bon, the main note and the top note of Prada Candy is caramel. The middle notes are powdery and musk and the base notes are vanilla and benzoin. I don't really know what benzoin is, but I know what vanilla is, and that's what this smells like to me. And now for my final favorite perfume, which makes up for Prada Candy's really poor packaging in my opinion. It is yet another perfume that I have done a review of here on my channel, and that is Marc Jacobs Decadence. I adore this packaging. It's so over the top. It looks like a little snakeskin bag with a little tassel. I know it's over the top, it's too much, but I love it. If you want to see my full review of this perfume, I will link it right over here for you to watch. Decadence is exactly as its name says. It is a very decadent perfume. I love that it is so different than all of Marc Jacobs' other scents. In keeping with my favorites so far, again, it is another super sexy, super empowering woman scent. I love perfumes that make you feel like you can conquer the world, and this is definitely another one of those perfumes. The sillage of Decadence is much like black opium. I feel like people will smell you within a pretty good radius. It's not insane, but it is one of my stronger scents. Like people will smell you from a distance away. And the longevity of this perfume, it'll last you all day. You'll spray it at 8 a.m. It's 8 p.m. You still smell great like you just put it on. I love that about this perfume. So this sophisticated and sexy scent on Fragrantica, the notes are described as top notes including Italian plum, saffron, and iris, Bulgarian rose, sandback jasmine, and orris root form the heart of the perfume, while the base includes warm liquid amber, vetiver, and papyrus wood. I don't remember which of these other ones is plum. It might be the one. I think it's the one. But apparently I like plum scents a little bit mixed in with my sandalwood, vanilla, and vetiver. All of those warm, woodsy, vanilla, gourmand scents. I do actually smell a tiny bit of the fruitiness in this perfume and it kind of has that like spicy kick to it a little bit in the beginning but then again on me it just kind of warms down and it just becomes a soothing comforting 
sexy smell. I still feel like these colors are just so rich, which is another good word for the actual scent itself, very rich. And that is going to bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about my favorite perfumes. If you did, make sure you leave it a big thumbs up. I'd also love to know what some of your favorite perfumes are. So in the comments down below, leave me your top two favorite perfumes. If you guys wanna find me anywhere else on the internet, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr at Julie Jigsaw. I love keeping up with you across all of my social media platforms. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you totally should so you hear from my next video and I'll see you guys then. Bye! I was on Ticketmaster on a Tuesday and I saw that there was one general admission ticket left for a concert that Friday and I was like, you know what? I like both of these bands enough to go see them.